Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about AutoZone. If you're interested in AutoZone, I got bad news for you. I wouldn't even recommend that you go any further than this. And this is why I'm bringing this up. So if we come down here, we look at AutoZone, what do we have? We have negative shareholder equity. Now, that could be for a variety of reasons. They could be borrowing money to, you know, expand whatever operations they want to expand, you know, whatever it is. You need to find that out. Like, that's a big deal because it could mean the company's in trouble, but it might not. So, for me personally, when I see something like that, done. Because my strategy is, Mostly, Mac, my strategy is not mostly. My strategy is max or tax advantaged accounts. Um, try and load up on either an S&P 500, total world market, or the total U.S. market. You'll be good to go. 5 to 10% for play money. This is just too big of a red flag. I have to do too much digging to find out why they have shareholder equity. So negative shareholder equity. So when I see it, I'm done. I, I don't, I don't want to do any more research. Okay. So that being said, let's get to the discounted cash flow. Now let's look at this auto zone, $1,794 stocks dropped since I first filled this sheet out. It's current, uh, EPE ratio is 17.5. Current EPS 102, I used that. Although the whole shareholder in even using the 102 and an expected growth rate of 8%, this stock is overvalued in my opinion. Now you might know more about AutoZone and you might be sitting at home, sitting there looking at me going, dude, why don't you eat a bucket of Richards? This is the reason why AutoZone has negative shareholder equity. All right, and I expect them to grow at 13% so you can eat a warm bag of Hobo Richards. I don't care. For me, I have quick elimination method and I move on. Good on you if I miss it. So that's what I didn't use a low. If, if I had gotten a number, like here's the uh, elemental. He asked me to add this in for companies and it gets you out of here really quick too. This is the target price that I have. So it's below what it's selling at. But if this was like $3,000, what I would do is I'd go back and start questioning my assumptions because I have that the stock is massively undervalued. And that's part of your due diligence, the word that gets thrown around where people on YouTube think that, thinks that it means read the 10K and that's it and then completely understand every aspect of the company. Do your screening first, then do your due diligence. God, I hate that term now. All right, so what are we looking at? We should have free cash flow around and uh, $40 billion market cap. Don't hold my feet to the fire. I filled this out on Sunday. I'm just getting to it now. So the market cap has dropped, but that would give us roughly a $2 billion free cash flow. Why I'm not really concerned about that is because, I mean, these are roundabout numbers to get you to the dance anyways. So that's why. But if we come down here, it generated $3 billion in free cash flow. That would indicate using a multiple of 20 a $2,700 stock down to a $2,000 stock. Um, free cash multiple of 10, of course, it's going to be lower, right? I kind of use this as a standard for, um, for what you would pay now. So there's no discounting there. So take these numbers with a grain of salt when I put them out, because I do. Current ratio, that's a concern. It's under one, meaning they'd have a tough time uh, settling all their debt. 
So that's just something, like I said, with the shareholder, the negative shareholder equity. You need to go back and start doing research to see if that's an area of concern for you. It might not be. Um, I think I bought British American Tobacco, and I think it had a current ratio pretty similar to this. So I just wasn't worried about it paying its short-term obligations solely because it's cigarettes and they're addictive. Anyways, let's keep going down here. Now, Guru Focus has this at 973, and then they have this ridiculous assumption. The guy should be fired for even putting this out, but whatever. Um, it's just another metric I look at. Again, I take everything with a grain of salt. So let's look at our numbers. Here's our cash flows. We're assuming an 8% growth rate, which it's the the year over year revenue is is up a lot, but this is something that I don't necessarily trust the numbers to last. So I'm using an 8% growth rate. It's grown at that for the past five years and the 10 year is six. We can take a look at that in a minute. But if we come over here and we look at the bull scenario, selling at a multiple of 25 for a 10% return, this is a $2,300 stock. And then down here for a 15% return, it's a $1,498 stock. Average these together, $1,635. And that's for a higher multiple than it's selling now. And it's still, it's overvalued. This is for a 12.5% return. No, I didn't get that from anybody else. We come over here, multiple of 21, you had a $1,500 stock, multiple of 15, which is what I consider fair value for the stock market. That's just my little thing. Um, you don't have to stick to that. You could use 20, but you're still overvalued. And then all the way down to a bear case of an 11 price to earnings ratio, $719 stock. If we come over here, this is the average of all of these um, price to earnings ratio. See how this is a PE of 11? This is for a 10% return. This is all the averages averaged together. So for a 10% return, I'm getting an average of $1,500, okay? And for a 12 and a half, or for a 15% return, I'm getting $936. I forgot one thing and oh yeah, I can't, I couldn't figure it out because uh, negative shareholder equity. Um, so if we come over here and we look at the free cash flows, that's this number, discounted back at 10, 15 and 20%, you get, and then average together again for a 12 and a half percent return, a $1,400 stock. And then down here, the target price is $1,253. If we come over here and we look at this uh, method right here, which is just using a multiple of 15. So it's your EPS growing times 15 and then times the shares out, well, that gives you your market cap, and then use the shares outstanding to divide, you get a number, discount that back, $2,617, and that's for a 10% return. I gotta fix that real quick. So that's a $2,000 stock, and that's for this growing at 10% per year, that's the bull case, What's the bear case of 6% growth? $1,149 and the mid range is $1,772. We could use in here 
Ah, that's the problem too. I had changed that. Let's relook at this. There we go. Okay. So what happened there is I was playing around with the numbers before and I used a terminal multiple of 28 in there. I forget which stock I did that with. But I mean, this is not a, a high flying stock. So I mean, this is not a fast mover. You're looking at in the best case scenario over the next 10 years, I really think 8% growth per year for a mature company like AutoZone is really kind of stretching it. But in the bull case, we get a $1,100 stock. And in the bear case, We are getting a $800 stock. I mean, I don't know really what more to tell you other than this seems to be just massively overvalued. Um, I believe this is the everything money results that I got and my stuff is right in line with theirs. And a lot of times what I do with this I've used Sven Carlin's discounted cash flow model. If I get like weird results that I don't trust, I'll use somebody else's to just, cause at one time I did that and it, I realized that I had left some numbers that I was playing around with. So I'll use multiple discounted cash flow calculators to figure out the intrinsic value. But this thing, like I said, um, I got requ a request to do this stock Dude, the negative shareholder equity, I'd be out at that, to be honest with you. I would have looked at the financial statements, gone to the balance sheet, saw negative shareholder equity and just said, I'm good. There's more productive uses of my time in the stock market. But like I said, if you must own AutoZone, I think you're overpaying right now and uh, you need to really figure out why that sharehold, negative shareholder equity is going on. I, I don't really care about AutoZone, so I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not gonna go figure it out, but maybe if I was on vacation and super bored, I would be like, okay, why are these guys, why do these guys have negative shareholder equity? But right now, there you go. In my opinion, this is probably kind of price to earnings rate. That makes sense for a slow grower like this. This is a uh, slow growth company. It makes sense for you to want to pick up, pick this thing up on fire sale. You would probably want to pick it up between a, a seven and a nine price to earnings ratio for a stock like this. Um, I'm not going to go mess around with price to sales or anything else. This discounts the stock for me. I'm satisfied that I've done enough work to throw it aside. Look at it at another time. Maybe if the market crashes and I see positive shareholder equity, but I would avoid this stock. Anyways, like, and subscribe and thanks for watching and I'm out.